Hey AP students, in this video I'm going to share with you how to write a great long essay question. Let's get to it. A student will select one question from three options on the same theme. Could be feminism, could be economics, something dealing with war. So you have a choice from periods one through three, four through six, and seven through nine. You get a lot of freedom. A student will also have 40 minutes to write the essay. It's worth 15% of your overall score on the APUSH exam. The expectations that you can state a relevant thesis that directly addresses all parts of the question, that you can support your argument with evidence using specific examples, and that you can apply the historical thinking skills as directed by the question. There are three big historical thinking skills that you need to focus in on. Causation, comparison, and continuity and change over time. So for example, you may be asked what changed over time and what stayed the same. And think about this, a lot of students kind of run into this issue. It's easier to write about change, but it's more complicated to write about what stayed the same. And so the college board's asking to do both of those things oftentimes. So prompt example, evaluate the, the extent to which technology fostered change within the United States industry from 1865 to 1900. Let's look at some other things that you may encounter with this particular essay as well. So it's similar to a DBQ, just without any sort of documents. Like the DBQ, you need to start with contextualization. Think Star Wars. In the Star Wars opening crawl, gives you all kinds of background information, background events that led up to the actual movie. But it doesn't give anything away about the plot of the movie. Essentially, that's what you're trying to do with the contextualization. In about three sentences, you're giving the events that led up to the prompt maybe some information that kind of surrounds the prompt, but you're not giving away your actual body part of your essay. The thesis statement. Make it the last sentence or sentences in the introduction. And I've made a video on that. Please refer back to that video if you want to get better at writing thesis statements. But the thesis statement should address one of the three big historical thinking skills. For example, you might argue that changes are more significant than continuities in a continuity and change over time essay. Body paragraphs. Three body paragraphs is pretty standard in a, um, in a college board LAQ. But the first sentence of a body paragraph is your topic sentence, which should introduce the category and then take a position. I urge my students to include three to five pieces of SFI, specific factual information, or you can think of them as key terms, in each of their body paragraphs. So as they brainstorm this essay first, I like to think of their three body paragraphs to have to about three to five key terms to back up whatever claim that they make. And if you can do that, you should have a very strong essay. So there's your first point, the contextualization. As mentioned earlier, it can't just be a phrase or a reference. It has to be specific. I urge my students put SFI or specific factual information, put that within the introduction right there in the first few sentences of the contextualization. Your second point is your thesis and or your claim that you're going to make. It should be the final thing you put in your introduction. So it responds to all parts of the prompt with a historical and defensible thesis that establishes a line of reasoning. Again, you can't get this point if you just go in and uh, restate or rephrase the prompt. And I would, suggest to you, I would suggest that it needs to be the last thing you put in your introduction. You get two points for evidence. So here's where it's just so important to go in and back up your claims. So you're going to get one point if you provide specific examples of evidence relevant to the topic of the prompt. To earn one point, the response must identify two or more specific historical examples of evidence relevant to the topic of the prompt. So here's the trouble. You must earn number one to earn two. So two, part two. The evidence that you do use does it support an argument in response to the prompt using specific and relevant examples of evidence. To earn two points, the response must use specific historical evidence to support an argument in response to the prompt as well. And then you've got the thinking skill part of the, of the essay. Again, two points for this one as well. Analysis and reasoning. This one's very similar to the previous slide in that you have to earn one in order to earn two. So part one uses historical reasoning, here are your big three thinking skills, comparison, causation, continuity, change over time, to frame or structure an argument that addresses the prompt. To earn the first point, the response must demonstrate the use of historical reasoning to frame or structure an argument, although the reasoning might be uneven or, un or imbalanced. 
And then when you're going, you're, we're going to go into number two. You're going to kick it up a notch a little bit. This is a, kind of the, the cherry on type, the icing on the cake for an essay. Does the essay demonstrate a complex understanding of the historical development that is the focus of the prompt, using evidence to corroborate, as in how do they work together, qualify, or modify an argument that addresses the question? To earn the second point, the response must demonstrate a complex understanding, which might, must be a part of the argument and not merely a phrase or a reference. This could include explaining nuance by analyzing multiple variables, explaining both similarity and difference, both continuity and change, or multiple causes, or both causes and effects. I want to urge you to be thinking about that second point. I feel like that one's going to be one of the easier ways to get this point. But continue on explaining relevant and insightful connections within across and across time periods, and confirming the validity of an argument by corroborating multiple perspectives across themes qualifying or modifying an argument by considering diverse or alternative views or evidence. So as you finish this up and as you begin to develop the, 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 these parts of your essay, please remember that the conclusion part of a um, long essay question is not overly necessary. This will be the last thing you do and it's not going to be overly necessary to write an amazing conclusion. But you just don't want to end in a cheesy way of saying something like, and this is what Amer has made America great like it is today or something of that nature. You want to go back and confirm why you're correct in whatever you claimed in your thesis statement. So maybe recap and then go back and confirm why you're correct in that sort of a way. Alright guys, I hope that was helpful. Please let me know if you still have questions. Thanks for watching.